Good morning everyone, welcome back to a brand new vlog, I hope you're all doing well. It is Tuesday morning and I am currently doing something quite fun. I'm going through all the little bits and bobs that I need to get chosen and ordered for the dressing room because we are currently um, two thirds of the way done with the painting. My brother is so busy at the minute. He actually has a flooring company and that is his trade. And he is swamped, which I am so pleased about. He is working on some really big projects and it's going really well, which is so amazing. Which does mean that he only has select amount of time to come and help me with my painting, which is absolutely fine. I would much rather he was working on big projects and progressing with his business than painting my dressing room. Um, it's really not that important. So I just said to him, look, whenever you're free, whenever you've got the time, just come and do it. It won't take long, even if you wanna do it in like phases, so he came Wednesday last week, as you would have seen in last week's vlog, and he got started. He did um, all the cutting in and he did the first coat. And the first coat is always just a bit of a whitewash just to get some paint on the walls. And then he was meant to come back on Friday, but got booked in with another job. So that was fine. So we actually came on Sunday afternoon and he got loads done he managed to do another i think another coat and the cutting in again so that was really good and it's looking amazing i feel like that second coat has just completely transformed the room already and the color i just love it i am so happy that i went for that color i spent so long deciding on what shade was going to be right especially with the lighting in that room and just the type of white that I wanted. I'm so picky with shades of white and I didn't want it to be a brilliant white like we've got everywhere else. I wanted it to be a little bit more of a warmer shade, something a bit creamier. And this paint and paper library paint color is perfection. So anyway, that is done. I actually need to cork some of the panels that were already there, some of the existing paneling. I think where I had corked it before, I'd left a few gaps and I didn't really notice the gaps when it was painted in the previous color because it's quite a dark shade and the shadows didn't really show up. But now it's painted in white, you can really see the gaps of the panels, especially because the walls are so wonky in our house. So putting paneling up, you have to really cork the life out of it for it to look seamless. I think later today I'm gonna get all the corking done I'm hoping I've got some spare cork in the shed. I think I have. Um, and then I also think I'm going to make a start on one of the cupboards because my brother didn't get to finish that off um, on Sunday because he had to shoot off. So I think I'm just gonna do the inside of that cupboard because I don't think it will take too long. And then when he comes back next week, all he has to do is do one final coat, which is really good. Um, I do still need to do a little bit of painting after that because we still haven't done the rest of the panelling and the final shelf needs to go in. The weekends have just been so hectic at the moment. We were working in the barn actually all weekend. Jack has been wiring in all the lighting and all of the plug sockets and the switches. And honestly, I don't understand how he can just watch one video and then know exactly how to do something. It's just crazy to me. But very helpful because if he knows how to wire things in, it's very helpful with other projects in the house later down the line, so that is really good. So, long story short, the dressing room progress is going ahead, but just a little bit slower. Which, to be honest, is not the end of the world because I still have to make some decisions on things and it gives me a little bit more time to just perfect those decisions and I hate rushing choices like that. So anyway, I am currently looking at hardware for the cupboard doors. So I want to get some really lovely handles. Um, I'm unsure what type of handles I want. So let me put a little picture on screen. I'm currently looking at a company called Rowan and Wren. They have beautiful hardware. Um, usually I just buy mine from Amazon. Amazon have a really good range of different hardware options and they are so inexpensive but i want this to look a little bit more expensive and sometimes i think smaller details in a room do elevate it a lot so i'm going for 
a bit of a nicer brand than just my usual Amazons. I don't know whether to go for something like this, which is more of like a rounded knob with grooves. I love this. I think this is so beautiful. It really has that traditional feel to it. But practicality wise, I like to hang my clothes on my hangers on my doors. I find it really helpful when I'm filming, planning outfits, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm unsure whether to go for something like that or something a bit more like this. Now this is more of a longer handle. I can obviously hang clothes off of multiple points of this. It does have that traditional feeling to it still. This is actually from a different brand called Decor and Decor. Um, so yeah. I'm not sure what to go for. I cannot make up my mind. I think what I'm going to do is put a poll on my stories and see what you guys think because it's really handy getting advice from other people sometimes. I have quite a lot of laptop stuff to get done today because I got my nails done yesterday and me and Faye end up chatting for absolutely hours but they look gorgeous. I got them a little bit shorter because these two nails I have had serious casualties with. I cut this nail off with the knife and then I smashed a bottle and cut my finger and then this one has just completely broken because of gardening. But they are looking really really nice and fresh. I just get my same by Abdolly all the time. It's my go-to and I just love the feeling of fresh nails. There is nothing better. Um, so I have a lot to catch up on today and I've got my second interior tutorial through for my course and my second assessment. So I need to get going with that. I did pass my first assessment, which was really good. And I now need to crack on with the second one. And this one looks a little bit more time consuming. So that is my plan for the day. However, we're going to the vets this morning because Basil has got a little lump kind of on his jaw, like around here. And the end of last week, it was really, really hard and quite big. And I sent a picture of it and also inside of its mouth is a little bit white, um, like back by his tooth. So I sent a picture of it to our vet and she had a look at it and she said, Do you know what, just come in and we can see it properly. It might be nothing, it might be fine, blah, blah, blah. Did a bit of Googling and it did say a lot about Labradors with their teeth. So I'm really hoping that it's not anything too drastic and he's not gonna have to have like an operation or anything, um, fingers crossed. But yeah, I'm hoping that maybe he's just chewing a stick and it's just kind of cut his mouth and it's got a little bit infected because that is something that the vet said. If he's chewing sticks and bark and things like that a lot, it can happen. So fingers crossed that is the case. Um, but we're heading off in about 10 minutes to take him and he's absolutely fine at the vets. He doesn't care about it at all. He jumps straight in the car. It's about a 10 minute drive and he's so fine. So I'm hoping it's not going to be too busy because it's a Tuesday morning. Usually we end up going to the vets on Saturday mornings. So I'm thinking it'll be quite empty. So hopefully we're just in and out and it's quick and it all goes well, fingers crossed. I'm just a bit nervous because if they say that it's something that needs to be operated on, it's just not going to be very nice. And I have a feeling they might have to inject it but I'm not sure, so we shall see. We're back from the vets and it was all fine. The vet just said to leave it and see what happens. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. He said that it should just go down and it's nothing to worry about. So thank goodness for that. Got good peace of mind for 40 pounds. <laughs> But I'm in the dressing room and I thought I would show you how it's currently looking. I'm just about to go down into the shed and get the bits I need and finish off a couple of little bits in here like I said this morning. But oh, I'm so in love with this colour. Let me show you. So as you can see, it is a lot brighter and actually this room feels so big now. I don't know why I didn't do this before. So my brother has painted two coats on the walls and he also touched up the ceiling as well so all we need to do now is add the coving um which i'm hoping isn't going to be too difficult it's so tricky with our walls because they are so wonky and yeah i'm just hoping that the coving looks okay it's kind of hard to show on camera because of the shadows especially at this time of the day but the color is such a creamy white when you compare it to a pure brilliant white it is so much milkier and creamier and I just love it. I love how my shelves are looking. I think they look so slick, 
really really seamless i have got one more shelf that's going to go in down here and then i'm thinking i might do a little skirting cap over those pipes just to cover those up but yeah i am over the moon i think this wall probably shows the color the best with the natural light at the moment um but it's just beautiful i love how it's brought the paneling to life and the bits that i need to cork you can kind of see here these tiny gaps that I've missed in the panelling. So there's a section here, and then there's also a section along here that I need to cork and just fill that little gap. Oh, and also there. So not loads, nothing major. I have already corked it, um, but I've just missed a couple of sections. And I think where this is obviously a brighter color, um, it shows up a little bit more. So I'm just gonna fill in all these tiny gaps just to make it super seamless. As you can see on this one, this is so seamless because I obviously corked this very well. <laughs> and same with this bit here, it's just super, super seamless. So that is what I need to do. And then I also just need to paint inside this cupboard because my brother didn't have time. And to be honest, I don't need to do it, he can do it. But I feel like if I just get that cupboard done inside, then when he comes back, all he has to do is one more coat everywhere. And then that's the painting done and you won't be back until it's time for the floor. But I am over the moon with how it's looking in here. I've just got so much more space. And as you can see by the window, once we have panelled this wall as well, so we're going to have the dado rail running across over to here. And then I'm going to do another couple of boxes in here i wasn't sure whether to do boxes around the window but to be honest i'm going to have curtains so you won't really notice that that much so i think i'm just going to leave that and just do um one big box there and then another box down here but look at the light that comes in it is just amazing this is my favorite room in the house the massive window the view of the oak tree the lighting I just think it's going to be amazing and actually somebody recommended that I put my island on wheels and I think that is a genius idea so thank you so much if you said that because I will be doing that and it just means that when I'm filming I can just wheel that back to that wall or by the window or I've got a bit more flexibility which is really good and actually that is something that I really wanted to maintain with this room was flexibility because I use this for working, filming, packing, styling videos, obviously like I get ready in here every day. It's nice to have that flexibility so I can move bits around, adjust it. If I'm filming like a proper styling video and I want to use this entire wall, for example, I can then tilt this down. How much better is it going to be filming lookbooks, styling videos, with a proper nice amount of space. So the island that would be in front of here, I could then just move it either side and we've got a really nice background. That's something that I was really struggling with in the dressing room before. If you've watched my videos for a while, you probably may notice that I would always prop my camera up on the window and then I'd have kind of this much room to film. And it was so difficult to show you a full outfit get my feet in the shot, have enough space, it was just so cramped and it was almost cramped for no reason because this is quite a big size room and now I actually have so much more space so to show you a full outfit is so much easier and I'm just over the moon so I definitely think I'm going to have some kind of little armchair in this corner um, I'm unsure whether I'm going to have a lamp here I thought about a plinth, but I've kind of changed my mind because I think that's a little bit useless. I can't really do much with that. So I'm thinking a little armchair and maybe a floor lamp that's going to kind of come above just to add a little bit more warmth and light. I really do want lamps in here because I think it just adds to that cosy feel. Um, I do have my ceiling light, but it's nice to just have a little bit of warmth. I'm just so excited about this room. I just love it. It gives me such good energy when I'm in here. And I loved this room before, but I feel like now it's going to be even better. And I cannot tell you, I am itching to organize my clothes and put everything away. So as soon as this room is ready for me to put things away, 
there will be a new wardrobe organising video because everything is going to be completely different. I'm going to have drawers in the centre. I'm actually going to have a little bit less room, which is not a bad thing because I have been clearing out my stuff a lot. I've been really ruthless of just getting rid of things that I do not wear and I've just held on to for no reason. Um, and you probably know that I like to have my wardrobes seasonal, so I like to have things in there that I'm actually wearing throughout that season. Um, and then I store everything away and then I switch over. That's just how I like to have it. I prefer it like that. It feels much more suited to me. So yeah, there will be a wardrobe organising video coming when we're ready to. But I just love this room. I'm so, so happy with it. But let me show you the wardrobe doors because this is where the hardware is going to go. So you can probably see because we've only done two coats. This is where the... Um, handle was before my brother did say he's going to sand this back and then when the final coat goes on this will be super seamless but i don't know whether to do a round knob or a long handle i think a long handle is going to look nicer because these are quite tall doors and i feel like a long handle will elevate and kind of like elongate the doors a little bit same with this one i feel like a long handle will look nice but also will be really practical so i'm unsure i also have these knobs up here which i need to decide if i'm going to change them or not but with the shelves i don't know if i've spoken about the shelves actually um these are just floating pine shelves from b and q so inexpensive and such a great way to add shelving especially if you want to paint it because they're pine so you're not worrying about any lacquer that's on the shelves already they don't need sanding down so these have been painted obviously and we actually measured these out so that i could have six shelves um, three that are quite close together and then there's two that are a little bit bigger so the bottom shelf in the winter I can have boots on like knee-high boots I can have my bigger bags um, I actually measured this to my bag and it fit perfectly so that's brilliant so yeah the two lower shelves are slightly bigger gaps very slightly I mean you probably can't notice it unless you know that that gap is slightly bigger than this one but I love them and I feel like it just gives such a nice accent area to the wardrobes and this is such a dead space, I think it works really well. If you've got any ideas of where I should put my mirror in this room, please let me know because I don't know whether I want it on this wall behind me or whether it's better to have it on this wall. I really don't know, I cannot decide. I don't know if it's going to be better until I, I don't know if I'm going to know until I get it. Um, and I don't really want to get things like that until the floor is in because firstly I'm just going to have to store it somewhere and secondly I want to get the floor in, the main bulk of the room done and then furnishing it and things like that I can take my time with. But I just love this room so much and I cannot wait to be able to use it and work in here and film in here, get back to styling videos. I've really missed going through my clothes and showing new bits and trying things on with you. So yeah, I'm really excited. And we do have a trip at the end of August, which I cannot wait for. And I'm really, really hoping that this room will be done by then, because I would love to film like a pack with me video in here and I can have all my bits on the island and I can get all the clothes out. Fingers crossed. Oh, if you didn't watch my last videos and you're wondering what paint we used, it is the Paint and Paper Library. It's in the Architect Matte Finish and it's sand number one. So sand comes in a few different strains and we've used number one. Absolutely love this paint. My brother actually says that this paint goes on really, really nicely. And he said that his top tip is always to add a little bit of water to the paint just to make it go further. It gets a little bit more silky um, and expensive paints can be quite thick and adding that little bit of water just makes it a little bit more fluid. So yeah, amazing. I am obsessed with the paint. I think it is such a nice finish. And considering this room has only had two coats, I think it looks really, really good. So that final coat is just gonna bring it all together, which is very exciting. Okay, 
the gaps are filled all the way around as you can see no more little marks in the wall and I have just done the first coat on the inside of this cupboard so if you can see by the top the top is pretty yellow so that's what it was like before now it is all fresh and white and I'm just going to let this first coat dry and then I'm going to go back over it and do a second. I also need to try and prise open these cupboards because I don't think these have been opened for a very, very long time. <laughs> they are so stiff. Um, probably the paint has seeped in as well, so it's got a little bit sticky. So I'm gonna try and prise these open with a screwdriver once all of the inside is dry and move on to the next step. But it's always a messy job. Whenever I'm painting, my hand is covered in paint. I did get my nails done yesterday, so these need a good scrub afterwards. But that is exactly why I wear the same tracksuit every time I'm doing some kind of messy job because I always get covered. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Thursday today and this weather is absolutely horrendous. It is pouring with rain and it is actually 20 to 5 now, but I have had a very productive day in the office working on my interior assessment number two which has been really really fun and i'm just loving it so much um i'm wearing a really lovely outfit today i've got this new lily silk cardigan which i probably shouldn't be showing you because i do have a full new in lily silk video coming soon um and some linen trousers just to be nice and comfortable but I really love this kind of outfit. It's just feels like pajamas, but it's a bit more elevated. Um, however, I'm picking up my camera because I have just been flitting around making the house feel lovely because my mum is on her way over. She should be here any minute. Do you want to go outside? Oh my gosh, bless you. Go on then. She should be here any minute and it's her birthday today so we are having we thought of loads of different things to do but because of the dogs it's a little bit tricky and not many people are free to look after basil so we opted on doing an evening celebration instead i think my mum's been out shopping today she's had a lovely day so she's on her way over and she has requested my risotto so i will be making my asparagus and edamame risotto this evening for dinner and she said all she wanted to do was just sit chat and have a drink so i've got some champagne in the fridge and that is exactly what we're going to do but i thought i would show you kind of how i've set up the house and some little bits and bobs that i've done the first thing i always do when it's kind of like a cozy day or it's the evening is put all the lamps on so i've got these two lamps which are my home sense ones i have this little lamp here and then my floor lamp as well these are all on my phillips hue bulbs so i can dim these like later on if i want to also light my candles so as you can see excuse the mess of this sofa i've just been sat here with basil um, as you can see, I have a little candle in a hurricane vase, which I think is a really good idea if you are always burning candles and you want that atmosphere, but you're not fussed about the scent or it being an expensive candle and you burn through them quickly because these pillar candles are so inexpensive. I actually have just used a vase and put a candle inside. And then I've also got another little candlestick burning over here just to add a little bit of vibes to the room. And then also in the living room, I have got my mum's present. So I'm actually, I've got her a couple of things which she has already got. Um, and I'm actually taking her for a little experience, which, which will be so lovely. Um, but I wanted to get something to kind of give her. So I thought instead of getting her real flowers, which I do every single year, I usually get them delivered to her house on the morning of her birthday. And instead of doing that this year i thought you know what i'm gonna do something that i know she's going to love that's going to be a little bit more everlasting i actually have a faux flower bouquet that jack got me for my birthday during lockdown and i still have it it sits well it moves around all the time but currently it's on the dining table please ignore the washing um so I had a little search online and picked up loads of different stems. We've got all sorts in here and I've actually just put them in this vase for now but I know my mum has a vase which isn't clear at home which will be a lot nicer. And I basically just had a bit of a play around and styled up a bouquet and I love it. I think it looks so beautiful and I think she is going to absolutely love it. 
Couple of things in here that I think I might buy for myself. These ones, also these, and if you're on the hunt for some faux hydrangeas, these white ones are absolutely incredible. I've bunched together quite a few here because they are quite small, but yeah, I just think it looks absolutely stunning. And then I've got her card as well. So she should be here any minute. I'm gonna get the champagne in the bucket so we can just sit here, put a bit of music on and just simply chat, which is her favorite thing to do. <laughs> and also she's bringing Gracie to stay over for the night as well. So um, we've got two dogs in the house, which is lovely. Basil has no idea what is coming. I'm sure he knows because he's just waiting at the door. He's so cute. So I am going to grab the champagne out the fridge. We still have so much alcohol left from Christmas. So any occasion that comes up, I'm just going into the alcohol cupboard and <laughs> getting things out. We've got a bottle of Pomeroy. This is the rosé one. My mum loves rosé. Prosecco, champagne. I mean, she is not fussy and neither am I. I would be happy with a Prosecco, but we have champagne and it's a special occasion, so why not? I'm gonna take this into the living room so it's all set up and ready for her. Is Friday morning my mum has just left and oh my gosh we had such a lovely evening it was just perfect I feel like it was just the perfect rainy summer birthday dinner it was lovely we just sat chatted about all sorts of things I made us an edamame and asparagus risotto which I think I said to you um, so we ate that with Jack we had some champagne and it was just so so lovely um early night as usual because we are such early birds in my family and yeah it was lovely so my mum has just left she's gonna take gracie back home gracie is just good as gold i cannot believe she's going to be 16 in a couple of months she is the smallest dog i think i've ever seen in my life it's so weird because when we got her she was tiny i remember carrying her home in the car and she was literally in my arms not my arms, she was in my hands like this. And then she got quite big and she was like, you know, a lot more muscular. She was still a really small dog, but she had a bit more about her. And as she's got older, she's got back to that small little baby size. And oh my God, she is just tiny. I was holding her and I just, it feels like you're honestly holding a tea towel. Like she's so light. But anyway, it was lovely. Had such a nice evening. So. I am gonna make my smoothie this morning. I've just chucked on um, this outfit, which I cannot stop wearing this shirt. I love it. This is a new um, purchase that arrived. This is from Cezanne. I am loving this shirt. I just keep wearing it because it's so comfortable. It's one of their classic shirts and it actually comes with a monogram option. So I have got LG and a little heart embroidered here in a lovely blue. It's like a baby blue color. I just love it, absolutely love it. So I've got it on today with just my Sandro shorts because it's actually quite nice outside, it's quite warm. Um, and this morning my friend Beth is coming over. She actually is over this way because she's got a meeting this afternoon. So she said, 
I'm free in the morning, I'm coming through, why don't I pop over? So we're gonna take Basil for a walk together and I think we're gonna have a little brunch just at the house. Super casual, super low key, just have a nice catch up and then I've got a busy afternoon. Um, but I am living for the no makeup at the moment. I am loving it. I have just done my skincare and I've popped a tiny bit of lip liner on and lip balm and that is it. And I'm just loving having no makeup on. I feel like I finally got to a point in my life where I don't rely on wearing makeup and I don't feel like to feel nice, I have to have makeup on. It's just such a nice place to be. So anyway, I'm gonna make my smoothie and then we are going to do a little bit of a Q&A because I asked on Instagram if you guys had any questions for me around home, interiors, garden, all of that stuff because my DMs have been getting so full of questions and I always try my best to answer you on DMs but sometimes it gets a little bit hard and actually a lot of the questions you guys were asking were quite similar and the same things were coming up a few times and I thought, you know what, this is going to be really useful for me to actually do this properly and explain it to all of you. Um, I was going to do it in a newsletter and I thought, actually, it'll be quite nice to sit down on YouTube and talk properly and explain things and discuss bits and bobs. So yeah, going to make my smoothie and then that is what we're going to do this morning. I am still having the exact same smoothie every morning. If you don't know, it's ice and water. A banana, I like the bananas when they're a little bit more ripe because like kind of when they look like this is perfect because they're just a bit sweeter. So I put a banana in there and then I do a tablespoon of this protein powder. This is the Form um, Vanilla protein powder and I really like this because it's got no GMOs. Uh, it's like vegan, dairy free, gluten free. It's not for dogs. Look at him up here, off. Oh. Um, yeah, and it does say you should use two, but I just do one tablespoon because I don't love the taste of it because um, it can get quite powdery. So one is enough. Then to give me that little bit of a caffeine kick in the morning, I use matcha. I use the Pure Chimp matcha, which I've used for so long and I just buy this on Amazon. So I do about a teaspoon of matcha, which is usually enough the lid on and then I blend it up. This Nutribilla thing, actually it's not a Nutribilla, it's a Ninja blender, is the best thing ever. It makes it so easy. And there we go. Easy as that. And I have been having this smoothie every single morning for probably about four months now. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm just gonna run through them and answer as many as I can. So, where are your garden chairs from? They're gorgeous. Our Black Iron garden set is from Dolls. I think it was about 800, 600 pounds, something like that for the whole set, which I think is amazing. And I'm so impressed with it. You can put the cushions in the washing machine. They come out good as new and it's super, super easy and it wears really, really well. Do you think you'll always stay in Kent? Yes, definitely. I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's where both of our families live. It's where all our friends are. We've both grown up here and yeah, I just would have no reason to live anywhere else. What are your favorite interior brands and where do you love to shop for interior pieces? Oh, good question. Okay, in terms of brands, I would say I like quite a mix. To be honest, my favorite places to shop are usually home sense i think you can find some amazing bargains in home sense i also love shopping on amazon because you can again find some real gems on there um places like dunelm ikea all of these kind of like budget friendly sites i love looking at because i feel like you can always hand pick something that actually looks beautiful and when it's styled properly i don't think you need to spend a lot of money I also love looking on Facebook Marketplace and eBay and Etsy and places like that because again, if you really do some research, you can find some amazing pieces. Our travertine dining table was a Facebook Marketplace find and we got it for such a bargain. And I honestly, this is my pride and joy. I will never get rid of this. I absolutely love it. But other companies that I also like, I really love Olivia's. I really love Zara Home. 
I like H&M Home sometimes, but I think it's gone a little bit downhill in recent years. I also love Swoon for furniture. I think they have beautiful pieces on there. I could probably send you a huge list of brands that I love, but honestly, probably my favorite tip for shopping for your home or interior pieces is to actually write a list of the things that you want and search for them on Google. So when I'm looking for something in particular, for example, say I'm looking for a ginger jar, I won't just go to a brand that I know sells them and look at them. I will type into Google the specifics of what I want. So say it was, I wanted like a blue porcelain ginger jar. I would type that into Google and then use the shopping section. I would use the image search. Sometimes I even find a piece that I love on Pinterest and then I will Google image search that photo to try and find similar ones of that style and i find that the best way to find things and it kind of means you're looking for the item direct rather than just trawling through websites i'm moving into my new home soon could you please share your top tips for interior styling okay my first tip when you move into a new home is don't rush i think when you move in it's so exciting and it's you get this like buzz of excitement for a new space and when you're quite creative and you have loads of ideas you're you will sometimes jump on that first idea and just run with it but i think it's really important to take things slowly and let yourself get used to the space notice where the light sits where the light falls how it comes in take your time especially if you're doing a big project and you're changing flooring paint colors all of that kind of stuff kind of along the same lines as taking your time i would also do the same when you're selecting furniture i love using sites like canva pinterest creating vision boards and doing all of that stuff to visually see how it comes together it's really easy to do and even if you're just kind of copy and pasting images onto a document just so you can see everything together I think that is a really good thing to do before you purchase anything. You don't want to order things and them not be right and have to return them because that is a huge hassle. So sometimes being able to visually see the space is really, really helpful. Another one of my tips is to measure twice, order once. I think with furniture pieces, with flooring, with curtains, everything, it's really important that you measure everything. I love to have a document on my phone with all the measurements of everything. I have the measurements of every single room, the windows, everything. And it just makes it really easy. If I'm ordering some new curtains, I don't have to then find the tape measure and re-measure. It's just all in my document. And another thing, if you have an older house, measure things in lots of places because most of the time your walls will be quite warped and the dimensions will change. So for example, some of our windows are actually slightly smaller at the top and slightly larger at the bottom. Our shelving units that we got built here um, the carpenter could not believe how wonky our walls were and he actually built all of the carcasses off-site came to fit them and he actually had to adjust some of the sizes because of that reason so yeah make sure you're measuring everything and then my last tip really is just make sure that you're purchasing things and styling your home in a way that you love i think sometimes it can be really difficult online there are so many photos so many different styles out there and you are honestly open to such a huge amount of inspiration it can sometimes be a bit confusing and you might find that you're changing your mind a lot that is totally fine i would say just make sure you are buying things that you really like and that will come together try not to feel like you have to stick to a certain aesthetic or theme i think when you're buying things that you really like they naturally do fit together for example our house is quite neutral we have pretty much a neutral palette running through a lot of creams a lot of natural tones and pops of like dark chocolate browns and dark woods which was always my plan and that makes it really easy to style and then if i decide that i want to add pops of green or in the office i've got little bits of blue 
that's fine because you can add in those colors with accessories. So I think as long as you're buying things that you love, it will always work. Also, if you are quite indecisive, I would always recommend to start with a neutral basis. And like if you're doing wallpaper, for example, go for a creamy neutral wallpaper and then add in those pops of color with accessories. I think that's always a fail safe option if you know that you change your mind a lot. When do you think you will do your kitchen? I'm so curious what you will do there. I had a lot of questions about the kitchen actually, and um, you guys have such good memories. <laughs> so when we moved in, we were actually initially planning to do a big revamp of the kitchen. I had lots of different plans of knocking through this wall into this space and creating a bit of a kitchen, living, dining area. Obviously, we hadn't looked into building regs, planning permission, all of that stuff. This was just initial ideas. Uh, we do actually have a well underneath our house, which runs through quite a lot of the kitchen, and we can actually access it. So if you ever see me watering the plants, I'm watering the plants through the well, which collects the rainwater, which is just crazy. Um, so when we had the hose pipe van, we were actually not using the proper hose pipe system because we were getting almost like a water butt essentially anyway so since then we we kind of left that on the back burner doing a kitchen is very very expensive and we just wanted to focus on the rooms that we would use all the time because the kitchen was kind of fine we repainted the cabinets as you might have seen if you followed the blogs for a while we did a bit of a temporary vinyl wrap on the counters and Jack has now built the little built-in seating area. So since we did that, the kitchen has been a lot more functional. We've spent a lot more time in there. Sorry if the light's going in and out, by the way, it's very cloudy today. Um, and obviously we finished off the rest of the house. We've been doing little bits and bobs and we have actually come into a bit of a potential future plan that means in the future, we would be able to do a much bigger project. And actually it would mean we could stay in this house forever, which is very exciting. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail because A, it might not happen, and B, I don't wanna jinx it. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of potential things. Basically our house just has a lot of potential for the future. And there's lots of kind of things in place where um, this could go ahead. I sound very cryptic, but um, yeah. <laughs> So that is why we haven't done anything to the kitchen like big. We've just kind of upscaled it a little bit um, because it kind of seems a bit pointless to do that when in the future, however near or far that is, we would be completely redoing it. So yeah, that is why we haven't done the kitchen. I always get questions about how we found our house, the process of buying the house, blah, blah, blah. Lots of questions about that. And I hope you guys understand, but um, Jack and I both live here and I it doesn't feel right to me to share details like that I think I share so much online about our house and where we live and all of those things It's I just want to keep some things private and I don't feel like that seems like something I would like to share online um, And lots of people do a lot of people do share the whole process and they take you along for the journey and they do big Q&A's and that's just not something I would want to do. Jack is very much not online and it just doesn't seem right to me. So I hope you can kind of understand that that's something I won't ever discuss. So if you do ask me those questions and I don't answer them, that is why. <laughs> do you live in Tunbridge Wells? I'm looking to relocate to Kent or Sussex and would love your thoughts. I don't live in Tunbridge Wells. My mum does live in Tunbridge Wells. And when I was growing up, we lived kind of outside of Tunbridge Wells, so I would spend a lot of time there. I used to get the bus into town all the time, and I knew like lots of people from schools around there. So I have spent a lot of time there, and I absolutely love Tunbridge Wells. I think if I was a bit more of like a city person and wanted to live in the countryside, but still have the amenities of being able to walk to an exercise class, a cafe, dinner, all of those kind of things. Tunbridge Wells would be where I wanted to live. I love it, I think it's beautiful. There are so many aspects to it that almost create such a lovely environment. It's it's kind of got that like upper class cosmopolitan feeling, but then it has so many lovely independent cafes and it has this really relaxed feeling about it. 
and I love it there. And there are also so many gorgeous surrounding villages. If you wanted to be in Tunbridge Wells, because it's a great place to be, there's lots going on, the train line is really good into London, but you wanted to live slightly out of the town, there are loads of gorgeous places. So yeah, I really love it there. I think it's a lovely place to be. Would love to see a home tour to get more of an idea of the actual floor plan one day. Probably won't ever do that, just because it just feels a little bit weird. Um, I share a lot of the house on YouTube and you're always seeing bits in the background and probably you can tell where things are from the videos, but I won't do an actual walkthrough of the house just because it just feels a bit strange. <laughs> What plans do you have for the kitchen style slash colour? Okay, so I have already answered a little bit about the kitchen, but I thought this was a good one to answer in terms of in the future, and I can kind of show you what style and colours of kitchen I really like. So I'm gonna put some pictures on the screen so you can see kind of what's in my head, but I love open plan kitchens. I grew up with an open plan kitchen and I just think that they are the best in terms of your living situations, especially when you have a family and animals. I think it's just so easy. And I loved growing up and having the dining table, a, a chilled kind of like casual living area and the kitchen all in one space. So that is definitely something we would do. In terms of the style, I really like traditional shaker style cabinets. I like things that have a little bit of detail in them. Um, I also love antique brass hardware. Not sure if that's something we would do because when we do get to that point, it would be a very long-term installation. We would have it for probably a very, very long time. So um, I don't know if that's something I would regret and wish that I went for silver, but I'm not sure. I also would 1000% get a marble worktop. That is definitely something I would do. I love it. I think it's beautiful, so clean and crisp. And I really like surfaces that kind of have, tell a bit of a story. I think that's why I love the travertine so much because, you know, there's little marks here and there. Like it just, it's quite lived in. I like homes that feel lived in. And yes, although I love my house to be super clean and super tidy and everything put away, Certain things do have little bashes on them, like the chest of drawers you are literally sat on came from my childhood bedroom. I kept them in storage for a lot of time and I gave them a lick of paint and spruced them up and changed the handles, but they still have little marks in them. You can see where I've scratched my name into them when I was young. There's like little grooves and little digs out of the wood. And I love that. It's not a perfect piece. It's got that, that memory in it, which I think is really lovely. So I definitely would have that in the kitchen as well. One of my main things for the kitchen is basically just to have a really bright, airy space to live in. I feel like the kitchen is the heart of the house and you do spend a lot of time in there. I love really bright and clean spaces, places that are very neutral in colour, there's not a lot going on, it just feels like a really nice blank space. As always with my interior style, I love to have a creamy base and add in those dark pops of chocolate brown, so I would definitely do that with the kitchen. Um, I actually think I would probably have a nice big dining table that was like a rustic wood or something like that, like a washed wood. I actually think maybe Jack could even build it, which would be really special. But then to kind of juxtapose that, I would have some gorgeous linen dining chairs. I just think that would be lovely. Okay, next question. I have a couple of questions about artwork. Um, someone is saying, how can you buy artwork that's not super expensive, but still looks amazing? And somebody else has said, where do you buy artwork and frames? So I tend to do a lot of it myself. I tend to buy a frame with artwork in that I really love from places like HomeSense, really inexpensive things. Um, and then I'll paint over them myself. So this artwork behind me and another one in the living room are examples of that. I am not a painter, I am so bad at drawing, I am not good at things like that. But when it comes to abstract, I feel like anyone can do it. These paintings that I have done in the house, I honestly just used leftover sample pots, a little bit of a cloth or a rag, and I've just kind of like sponged it on and that's it. Super easy and it can look really, really good. So that is one of my tips, especially when you're doing like a canvas piece the canvas that we have in the living room I did about two years ago. It's literally from Hobbycraft. I got a pot of polyfiller and some paint 
and that is it super super easy but if you're looking to actually buy artwork there are so many gorgeous pieces at antique shops if you have any local antique fairs antique shops even charity shops sell loads look on ebay look on facebook marketplace etsy there are tons if you know what you're looking for type it in and you will find something. If you have some frames at home and you're looking to get some prints done and you're not too worried if the prints don't have a lot of texture, like an oil painting and you want something more just for a frame, I would definitely recommend looking on Etsy. If you type in vintage um, artwork into Etsy, so many small businesses come up. I really love Trove prints, that's one of my favorites. I have a couple of bits from there. They're just so many beautiful photographs and they're, they're photographs of paintings. So they, they have that detail and they look really intricate and that kind of antique style, but they are just prints. So they're super inexpensive and they're really easy to slot into any frames. Also on the topic of this question, I am actually on the hunt for some artwork for my dressing room because I have a couple of blank spaces that I would love to fill with some artwork, but kind of want to do something a little bit different i don't want to have anything too antiquey or painting kind of vibes i want something a little bit different so i have actually been looking at um beautiful silk scarves with lovely patterns i've been looking at um embroidered cards and napkins where you can get like a letter or a note or a quote embroidered and I'm thinking about popping those into a frame and I think that will look really beautiful. A lovely frame with a gorgeous mount. I think that will look really nice. So kind of use your imagination a little bit. Artwork doesn't have to be a painting or a print. You can use anything and put it in a frame. Even if you have, I don't know, a beautiful collection of shells or you, I don't know, press flowers, pop those in a frame. I mean, how gorgeous to have like pressed dried flowers in a frame i think that's so stunning actually that's a really good idea i might do that <laughs> yeah i just say use your imagination and pinterest will be your best friend type in lots of things get inspiration and anything anything can go in a frame really a beautiful feather anything so Thank you for listening to my TED talk on interior and homes. Do always let me know if you have more questions, if you want me to do another Q&A, if you want to see like different home bits, always let me know because I am so open to hearing your guys' ideas. But I am going to end this vlog here because I have no idea how long this is. Beth should be here soon and we're going to have a lovely catch up. And then I'm going to start another vlog because we have a very lovely weekend. So thank you for watching this vlog. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.